the fact that many people believe that they're going to gain psychic abilities when they go through their awakening or open their third eye has led people astray and has misguided them into thinking that they haven't truly awakened or opened their third eye when they really have. The thing is, not everyone's going to be a psychic or medium. Everyone experiences their awakening or third eye activation in different ways. So the thing with awakening, right? You can have it happen in stages. You can have it happen all at once. For each person, it is different, okay? So it's not something where you're going to wake up one day and be like, oh my God, I see dead people now. Or, oh my God, like, I know everything. It's not like that. Number one, when a person is going through the process of awakening or is awakened or their third eye, you know, activates, sometimes you will feel a sensation right here, right where your pineal gland is. And that has to do with movement of energy moving around in that chakra, which then leads me to number two, which is headaches. Now, just if you get headaches by itself doesn't mean you're going through an awakening because headaches can be caused through so many different variables such as, you know, like the weather, getting sick, you get my drift. Okie dokie smoky. Number three, you become more conscientious of the things you put inside your body. Why is that? It's because you are going to want to be the best version of yourself as possible. So. The best version of yourself is healthy. <laughs> Number four, being empathic or just caring more for others. I've, I've said this in previous videos, the more you care about other people, the easier it is to build a connection and the more, you know, you're going to be able to understand a person because you're going to be experiencing their emotions, thoughts, feelings and it'll be easier to tap into natural psychic abilities. Not saying if you're empathic, you're automatically going to be psychic or a medium, but I noticed that those that are psychics and or mediums tend to have this skill. Number five, light sensitivity and sound sensitivity. Now again, by itself, doesn't mean you're going through an awakening or that your third eye is opening or opened because you know there are a lot of variables that can come into play here but when you combine it with a bunch of stuff on this list maybe you're going through an awakening huh uh and the thing is it has to do with like overstimulation of the things going around you so for me oh boy oh boy do i have light sensitivity Oh my gosh, and I get headaches all the time. And I know it has to do with the energy and the different pressures that I feel in my body. And yeah, it's benay-nays. Wait, is that, that's not a word. <laughs> benay-nay, it's cray-cray with a little bit of bananas. Anyway, <laughs> number six, your life is transforming. And, you know, for the better, you're gonna be noticing that you're growing not only spiritually, but as a person. So things that you might have liked in the past, you ain't gonna lack in the future and vice versa. So number seven, you're gonna kind of snap into reality and you're gonna be thinking about like, what's my purpose? So finding your purpose is number seven. And I don't know, it's just like, you're gonna start questioning so many things because now there are so many things that have your attention. Number eight, astral projection. You know, for me, this one's a biggie because 
I was experiencing astral projection as a child, but back then I didn't know that's what it was. I just thought it was some lucid dreams, but it turned out to, you know, not be just lucid dreaming. It was astral realm experiences in astral projection. Number nine is an ego death. So with ego death, that's when your sense of self kind of starts taking a back seat, really. And you realize that it's not just you in the world. There are other beings. There are other things that come into play. Essentially, you'll be feeling one with the universe. And it has to do with cultivating a great sense of awareness of yourself and the things around you. So I didn't have an ego death until after I was fully awakened. But I will say having an ego death is something I needed to get to where I am right now. It promotes growth significantly. Number 10, this is another biggie, seeing shapes and colors and things when your eyes are closed. Now, I didn't, okay, so for me, I experienced this all the time and I didn't think it was abnormal. I thought that's how shit was supposed to be. I thought it was normal, but apparently it's not. And I don't know, for those who experience this, for me, it's like, and obviously not after you're looking into a bright light and you see little dots and shit. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. It's when, you know, everything is reset in your head when it's dark. Like, let's say you're about to go to sleep, your eyes are closed, and you know, all you see is darkness. But instead of darkness, you see little kaleidoscopy colors, some shapes, some images. Yeah, that's what I mean by that. 11. Feeling a sense of freedom. Now, living in this world, no matter what country you live in really, most people kind of feel trapped in their environment and situation. But when you, you know, go through an awakening and your third eye is open and yada yada yada, you start to feel this sense of freedom. Like, you can do anything. Now, of course, I didn't feel this part until I would say a few months ago when, you know, with my health situation, I am so sick that I technically can't work a full-time job on my feet. I have a chronic illness if you didn't know, but it's like I can't do certain things and so my doctors have me pretty much doing work from home stuff and yeah, so because of that, I was forced to kind of try to seek a retirement disability with my work, right? And that means I'm not working in person and they can't relocate me or find me another job within the company because it's like a parallel movement in my level. And if they can't find that, then I don't get work. And I've been on leave without pay status for since January and so yeah it's a struggle but it's like even though with my crappy health and struggling for money and being in the really bad situation that I am somehow I still feel this sense of freedom like spirit is gonna guide me into the correct path and all I have to do is ride the wave and trust in spirit and I will be taken care of hopefully. But no, seriously, it's like, once I adopted that belief, I noticed that when I needed something, somehow, some way, spirit would provide. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it's still not easy financially. Like, it's a struggle, I'm not gonna lie. But when there's something I really, 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 really need, like, life-threatening, like, need, Spirit will give it to me, for the most part. But so, yeah, I still somehow experience some sense of freedom, believe it or not. And also, because of this, I was able to grow my YouTube channel and provide all these videos for all you guys. 
So, I mean, there's that. Number 12, seeing through the bullshit and pretty much knowing the intentions of other people and being very self-aware and mindful. So I kind of lumped that all in one category. 13, opening to a perception of more than yourself and more than duality. Now, in this 3D world, it is comprised of duality, which means if you don't know what duality is, it's usually you have the opposite two things. So you'll have light and dark or heavy and light. You get my drift. But in this 3D world, it's comprised of duality. However, when you ascend to the higher realms, the more duality isn't a thing. Because when you ascend higher, everything is just one. Everything is connected. Trees, people, your environment, spirit, everything is one. We get everything from a collective energy. Number 14, noticing auras. Now, I feel like I could do this before I had awakened, and I feel like a lot of people can do this if they practice. And again, by itself, I wouldn't say someone is awakened, but again, combined with other things, pretty much this whole list is you got to combine it with other things. But I learned to be able to see auras on people, though it takes me a little bit of time to see. But for me, I usually see it in person. Sometimes I can see it in a person's video. But if I see it in a video, it's not like me looking directly at the video. It's more of like I'm channeling and then I'll see it clairvoyantly instead of with my eyeballs. Whereas in person, I can see it with my eyeballs, if that makes sense. Number 15. Reduced fear of death. Now this one's a big one for me. Okay, so before I went through my awakening transition, my literal, okay, I kind of, I don't, I don't want to say I had a mental breakdown over death. Just one day it hit me and I'm like, holy shit, like what happens? Like, is it just going to be dark? I'm not going to have a consciousness. And then it just spiraled out of control in my brain. And then within a few weeks later, Ba-boom! Haunting experience in my bedroom. And then I realized, oh shit. You know, even though my haunting experience was traumatizing, it's because of that haunting that I learned that there's more to just death than, you know, the body dying. I learned so many positive things from that haunting that it helped me cope and understand how things work when people die and I now have no fear and I have the utmost confidence that when I die everything's gonna be okay I'm gonna haunt people I don't like just kidding I won't do that I, I don't want to be an earthbound spirit but anyway it's like I'm not going to be afraid anymore and I think that is the biggest relief one person can have I feel like a lot of people have that fear of death depending on your culture how you were raised or how you were in your environment, like a lot of people are afraid of death. And I didn't even think about it until like a few weeks before my awakening. And I don't even know, it just punched me in the face really. And was like, hey, number 16, heightened intuition. Now, during your awakening process, you might realize, oh shit, I just know things now. There are a multitude of ways that you can get information that way and you can get it through your clairs and sometimes it's just instinctual so there's that for me while you know i was going through my awakening i started having visions of things that would happen and i didn't believe that that was happening and i had to test myself so many times and each time i got validated so you know i needed that validation to even consider that to be reality. Number 17, feeling energy shifts and or energy sensitivity. For me, well, I've had that my entire life and didn't know that's what it was. I just had an aversion to people, to some people, that there was just darkness or negativity around them. And I was like, nope, bye Felicia, I ain't subjecting myself through that. 
And I didn't know that. But I noticed too, like when people go through an awakening, it sometimes can happen in stages. So sometimes it can happen all at once or it can happen periodically through your life. That was me as a kid. I would go through these certain stages. So like with the energy, sensitivity, um, the headaches, the light sensitivity, which is interesting, headaches. I kind of have all that in sections throughout my life. And those ones were like the first things in astral projection. And then I feel like my next one would probably have been in college because I started questioning, well, I started realizing what I was putting in my body. I also started realizing the truth about politics that no matter what side you believe in, it's all a fucking scam. Regardless, it's just one guy trying to be like whose dick is the biggest. Honestly, it's literally a pissing match. And it's all just an illusion. If you really think about it, it's just an illusion to pit people against one another. And I will not play that game. Number 18. I've also experienced this through my entire life. Enhanced creativity. I also learned that The moon phases play a part with that, but I kind of go into this manic phase. And we joke about this on the Lights of Midnight podcast all the time. And, you know, coming up with these 31 videos in 31 days, guess when I had that idea? You guessed it, it was on the full moon. And I, I don't know why I did that to myself, but I said YOLO. Just kidding, we live more than just once. Anyway, but you get what I'm saying. It's like manic phase made me think of impulsive ideas and I had to go through with it. And it's not just like with video content, it's with art. Um, I'm called the fine art medium, hello. Like my main thing is art. Even though I do paranormal advisory, like I have the same amount of skill with that that I do with art, if not more with art. And yeah, so my creativity, sparks during the full moon and guys if any of you are like that too let me know down below we can be manic together strong introspection for number 19 so that has to do with deep understanding of yourself your thoughts your emotions why you do what you do let me tell y'all this this was more This hit me more in college. I don't know if I would consider it part of my awakening because, you know, I was a criminology major, psych minor, so I was kind of doing that already, but maybe that was just the road spirit led me down because they knew I was going to need to be doing that in the first place to, you know, advance and continue to grow. So, coincidence? When it comes to spirituality and the paranormal, honestly, I don't think it's coincidence. You tell me. Number 20. Increased synchronicities. You're going to start noticing synchronicities. And at first you're going to be like, oh, it's a coincidence. Well, what did I just say? When it comes to this stuff, mm, there's no such thing as a coincidence. So, and... That's when you're going to start noticing signs from the universe and or your guides. And that's also part of the awareness thing too, like I stated before. Number 21, spiritual connection. You're going to start, you know, having this feeling that you're not alone and that you have beings that will be there to guide you, that will help you, that love you unconditionally. You will feel a stronger connection to something greater than yourself. And a lot of people, especially those in the religious communities and different cultures and things, already have this down pat. But once you get through this awakening, it's going to evolve. Number 22, heightened psychic abilities or mediumship abilities. So this is where your clairs come in. So remember how I said that an awakening can go through in stages? Well, maybe in the first stage, while it was beginning to open you started having some abilities. Like, so for me, I had clairsentience. That is my strongest ability, right? And as I would grow and advance and continue to awaken, I would gain more abilities. And the abilities that I already had would grow stronger. Number 23, lucid 
dreaming. So it's kind of like with the astral projection, but lucid dreaming, you know, things are going to be more vivid and you can even practice to, you know, learn how to control your lucid dreams. Though at some point you get into that blurred line of astral projection. So I always say sometimes your dreams aren't necessarily dreams and they're actually astral realm experiences. You know, the dream realm is separated from the astral realm. It's not the same thing. I've actually, and this is weird and kind of like inception-y, but I've been on the astral realm and then while I was on the astral I fell asleep and then had dreams while I was on the astral realm, which is weird of in of itself. But I've literally had my guides have to wake my butt up and be like, um, hey, um, we were like doing something and you kind of just like passed out. So we need you to, you know, wake up and uh, continue what we were doing. And yeah, so it can be embarrassing sometimes. But anyway, I, I feel like a lunatic. But yeah, so the way you can get your lucid dreaming and your actual projection like better and increase that skill is by writing down all your experiences in a dream journal and or an astral realm experience journal. I kind of combine the two, but it's like I'll put in parentheses which it is. And you know, I do have a video where I kind of talk about the difference between astral projection, astral realm stuff versus dream stuff. I think somewhere in a video, I'll put it in a card somewhere up at the top. But um, so yeah, do that. When you do that, you'll be able to recall more and it actually makes your experiences more vivid. So I highly recommend that. Number 24, more paranormal experiences. Yeah, that shit happens sometimes because you're a bright light and you're kind of like how you draw a moth to a flame. Entities see that and they're like, ooh, energy num nums. And <laughs> they get attracted to you. Sometimes, you know, you attract more spirits like earthbound spirits because they want to talk to you. They see that you have these capabilities and they're like, yes, it's my chance. And they try to start talking to you while you're trying to sleep and you're in that in-between state and you're trying to sleep and you hear someone talking to you. You're like, what the fuck is going on? And uh, yeah, so yeah, that, sh that happens. Let me tell you, during my awakening, during my haunting, not only did I have my haunting, right? Um, I went to a haunted location before I knew even how to protect myself. So learn from me. Learn how to protect yourself before you go to haunted locations. Well, technically you should learn how to do that anyway because technically everywhere is haunted if you think about it because spirits are going to be around anyway because that's just how it is. Some places are just have more of that than others and some places have more negative entities than others. So it's always good to protect yourself anyway. But yeah, I went to a haunted house and uh, yeah, I picked up a negative earthbound spirit that tried to choke me and dangle me over a stairwell on the astral realm. So it wasn't like in person, you know? But on the astral realm, they grabbed me by the neck, hung me over the stairway and was pissed because I was trying to communicate to the wife that that spirit was abusing, you know, when they were alive and he did not like that I was talking to her because she's not allowed to talk to um, people unless he says so because back in that time, women were property. But anyway, so yeah, and then I would have random things come to me and talk to me and I didn't like it because I didn't know and I wasn't as skilled as I am now and so I didn't know what was talking to me and it just scared the bejesus out of me. Number 25. People and animals are going to be more attracted to you. Are you that kind of person where you're working in a retail kind of situation and then you just have random customers walk up to you and tell you their life story? Or you're just walking on a trail and oh there's a cat it's following you. Oh a bird landed on your shoulder. Yeah that's happened to me a lot my entire life. I I don't know what it is, but I attract cats, squirrels, and birds, and dogs. Like, every time my neighbor's dog escapes the yard, which is like on a weekly basis, he comes straight to me every time. Um, I have two squirrels 
that wait for me to come outside. I don't know why. I should probably find out why. Now I'm curious. But like every day they're on my porch. I'll come out, let the dog out. They'll be waiting for me. Um, I'll come back. Oh, they're back on the porch waiting for me. And I'll start talking to them. And it's, it feels like they're listening. But yeah, and then I have people that come and tell me their life stories. And I'm like, I do not get paid to be your therapist. But you know, retail, the customer is always right and you gotta listen to them. But I'm not saying that because I hate it. I mean, I like helping people. I'm just saying, like, as I was going through my awakening at first, I did not like it. I was just like, why are you telling me your business? Like, I don't know. But now that I understand why what's going on, to me, it's never a problem. And I actually like giving guidance and advice to people. So, what you gonna do? But yeah, those are 25 signs that you may be going through an awakening and or that you are awakened and or that you're going through steps of an awakening and or that your third eye is open. Yeah, it's kind of like the same terms apply to multiple different things. But yeah, so guys, let me know. Did I miss some? I probably did because I'm only human. Anyway, guys, if I miss some, put them down below. If you have any thoughts, questions, concerns, let me know. I love replying to as many people as I can. Also, I know a lot of you need help with paranormal advisory. This is what I'm going to tell you because I am only one person. And as much as I love to help everybody, right, energetically and as one person, it is impossible. And what I will say is this. If you want to share this Celites Midnight Podcast Season 2, we're taking in people that need help because we're going to be able to identify the entity for you and give you solutions for that entity. So this is only if you want your story or your situation on an episode of the podcast. So write it down below if you are interested and then we'll have an episode dedicated to you so you will get help and that way, you know, it might take some time, but at least, you know, you'll get something out of it and some help eventually, if that makes sense. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you know why I just did what I did, yeah. If you like this type of video, I highly recommend watching the video where I talk about the ways you can open your third eye, and that's because that is the prequel to this video.